On the 8th of June, 1826, Sir John Everett Millay was born in Southampton, England. He began to draw at four years old. His parents supported him with private art lessons. Sir John Everett Millay is one of the founders of the Pre-Raphaelite Brotherhood formed in September 1848. He was 19 at the time. Along with him in the Brotherhood were William Holman Hunt and Dante Gabriel Rossetti, who all met and studied in the Royal Academy of Arts in London. In 1840, Millay became the youngest student to ever study in the Academy. Inspired by John Keats' poetry and John Ruskin's modern painters, his style gave great attention to detail, often concentrating on beauty and complexity of the natural world. One of Millet's first successful pieces was made in 1852 and was entitled A Huguenot on St. Bartholomew's Day, refusing to shield himself from danger by wearing the Roman Catholic badge. Because the title is so long, it is usually shortened to A Huguenot or A Huguenot on St. Bartholomew's Day. The painting's full title gives the full meaning of the painting itself. At first, Millet had planned to simply paint two lovers, but his mind changed when William Holman Hunt said it was overused. After Millet had seen the opera called Les Huguenot, he changed the painting to refer to the event, which was the St. Bartholomew's Day Massacre in 1572. The word Huguenot means a French Protestant. On the evening of the Feast of Bartholomew the Apostle, which was on the 23rd of August, 1572, the Huguenots were assassinated in Paris by Roman Catholics. was a result of three events. The Peace of Saint Germain en Laye, which put an end to the Third War of Religion on the 8th of August 1570. This was a treaty between the Catholics and the Protestants. The second reason is the marriage between Henry III of Navarre, who was a Protestant and later became King of France, Henry IV and Margaret Valois, the sister of Charles IX, who was King of France at the time. Many wealthy Huguenots had gathered in Paris for this occasion. The third reason is the failed assassination of Admiral Gaspard de Colony on the 22nd of August, 1572. He was the military and political leader of the Huguenots. The massacre lasted for weeks, spreading to the outskirts of France. The death toll, according to modern estimates, varies widely between 5,000 and 30,000 in total. Despite this, there was a small group of Protestants who escaped by wearing the sign of the Roman Catholic Allegiance, a white armband. In the opera, Le Huguenot, 
The character Valentin attempts to get her lover Raul to wear the armband. However, she is unsuccessful. The cloth and plants are incredibly detailed. The composition and tones in the painting make the setting seem calm, but the girl's face and the positioning of her arms say otherwise. Through this, Millet captures the intensity of the scene. The man's face, seemingly calm and happy, emphasizes his acceptance of death. He would rather die than deny his faith. According to the language of flowers, the ivy can stand for friendship in hard times. While the Canterbury Bells mean constancy and faith. And the Nasturtiums express patriotism, but in this case, it can mean loyalty to his faith. During this period of time, it was crucial that Millet used a pro-Protestant subject, for the pre-Raphaelites had been criticized for their themes of constant Catholicism. A Huguenot became Millet's first successful painting. You can tell that um, this painting was painted back at the olden days because you can see what they're wearing and the style of the painting and the artist is really into the details and stuff and uh, most importantly you can see that there's a story behind the painting because of what's going on like there's a girl on the left and she's like holding the guy with her hanky so yeah that's pretty mysterious unusual to be painted out. Yeah, there's definitely a story behind this painting. And it's obvious that um, the two are in love with each other with the way they like holding each other. So yeah. One art critic that supported the pre-Raphaelite Brotherhood was John Ruskin. Ruskin and Millet became friends. Millet painted this portrait of Ruskin. Through their friendship, Millet met Ruskin's wife, Effie Gray. He later asked her if she could model for one of his paintings, which she did, in order of release. They later fell in love. Although Ruskin and Effie had been married for several years, Effie was still a virgin, therefore the marriage had not been consummated. This led Effie to file for an annulment. A year later, she married Millet. This brought on public scandal. Due to the annulment, Effie was not allowed in the presence of Queen Victoria, causing her to miss out on several social events. Before the annulment, Effie had been very active socially. This bothered Effie and Millet, although many didn't mind her situation and had her as a guest anyway. Millet painted this portrait of Effie. <laughs> Due to the scandalous rumors of their relationships, their story was made into a play which then led to biographies and fictional stories that usually focused on Effie. Now their 
stories are being made into a movie, with the screenplay written by Emma Thompson and Dakota Fanning acting as Effie. The movie is expected to be out by late 2012. Later on, Effie and Millet had eight children together. This is a list of the Millet children, one of which became an artist later on, John Millet. Millet used his children as models for most of his art pieces. He used George in this portrait. Millet used his daughter Sophie as a model for these two paintings. These two paintings show Effie, Millet's eldest daughter. This is Millet's granddaughter. This painting is entitled Bubbles, which his grandson William Milborn James modeled for. It became very popular as an advertisement. After he had married Effie, Millet's style changed from precise detail to more of an impressionistic feel. Later on, Millet took to painting landscapes. This is called Chill October. In 1853, Millet was elected as a member of the Royal Academy. He later was declared a baronet in 1855. He was the first artist to be honored with a hereditary title. In 1896, Millet was elected president of the Royal Academy, but he died in the same year from throat cancer. When he died, the Prince of Wales commissioned a statue of the artist. It is now in front of the Tate Gallery. His era jump-started artists to continue or use elements of his style, evolving it into several other art movements later on. Even today, people are moved and inspired by John Millet's art. In this, his legacy lives on.